we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Backyard Garage. On today's episode, I am going to be putting in a Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 fuel injection system on my motor. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off on the last video and getting the timing chain cover, the harmonic balancer, um, the new intake and everything put on. So stick around and uh, we'll get started on that. Okay, so the first thing that I did here let me zoom in here and get you set as I got this gasket all ready to go I put some RTV on the back of it and I just want to set it in place here And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more RTV and seal up the gasket a little bit better. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the new cover. Okay, and this is going to be hard to see, or actually you probably won't even see it at all, but <clears throat> up under here where this connects to the block on the either side of this, I got to put a little dab of this uh, sealant on there, so I'm going to do that quick, and then I'm going to bolt the uh, oil pan back up. There's really nothing to see, so I'll be back once that's done. Alright, so here is where we are at. I got the oil pan on. Um, I got the old starter back on because the starter, as you heard in my last video, it was just kind of grinding, making a lot of noise. So that's what I got done. Now the next thing that I want to do, I'm not going to record this, but I'm thinking I'm just going to put a light um, or spray a coat of paint on my water pump here. Just because one of the comments, um, somebody said, hey, you should have painted your water pump. And I was like, meh, whatever. But now I understand why. The reason I want to paint it is so that it doesn't rust. So I'm going to do that. And then over here, we've got all sorts of goodies we got to install. Um, new coil, new wires. Uh, right there. The Pro Flow, Pro, Pro Flow 4. And then I got a black off plate for the fuel pump for the mechanical one in here is a high pressure fuel pump and then also I needed a exhaust with a bung on it so that's got the O2 bung on it so I got to be modifying the exhaust a little bit and do some of that and then also it came with this new um, air filter cover which is pretty sweet so that's kind of where we're at so I will be back in just a minute okay so now we're going to remove the fuel pump now we gotta drill this hole out here
Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to weld on this uh, exhaust flange here with the bump, and I need to weld it onto this pipe, exhaust pipe here. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Okay, note to self, um, make sure you don't have anything flammable laying around. Holy crap, that was crazy. <laughs> Well, I got this all welded up. These welds are not very pretty, but there is no holes and they will do the trick. So, that works. And now I need to weld this uh, other exhaust pipe here. So see if this will uh, weld a little bit better. And it looks like this weld actually turned out a little bit better. Still pretty thick. I think maybe my wire speed is too high. But there she is coming along this button. Okay, so I got my exhaust all welded up and put on. And I got it all in up under here and welded. Um, you see the weld and everything. Um, and then I got this welded too, and then it just goes back, tapping into the existing. I did put a clamp here because this is a pretty tight seal, and if I need to turn this at all, which is the O2 sensor, and the reason I welded everything is I have to put this in, so um, that's what I did. But the first um, thing in the instructions is to put the O2 sensor in and put it at 10 degrees, from horizontal which is like that so that's just up just a little bit you can't really tell in here but it is roughly 10 degrees so then we gotta tighten this up so that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna actually use both hands to get this nice and tight it also does have the high temp um, thread grease on it so it will come out one day if I have to take it out. Actually, I got that sucker's pretty tight. So I think I got it with just one hand there. Um, I'll double check it here in a second. But that's the first step to getting the Pro Flow 4 installed. So the next step says to remove the, these here. Next step is to clean the surface with a heavy degreaser, which here I'm using lacquer thinner. You want to use a cloth towel and not a paper towel. Again, the reason being is a paper towel will get chunks of paper in the motor, whereas a cloth towel will avoid that.
The next step says to apply two layers of this gas gun cinch. Gas gun cinch? I, I don't know. I'm probably saying it wrong, but gas gun cinch. I'm applying that. Um, it says two layers on here. Um, this is like a cement. It says thin layers, and then let it set for about a minute in between each layer. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. Okay, then the instructions say to <clears throat> add a thin layer of this to the gaskets here. While that one's tacking up, we're going to go ahead and hit this one quick. like Bob Ross here painting a work of art. <laughs> if I'd let my hair get long and poofy, maybe I would look like him. I don't know. <laughs> Minus a facial hair. Does he have facial hair? I don't know. That's way out of my my league. Right, I'm not my league, my time zone. Like, I'm a lot younger than Bob Ross and the era that he was on TV. Okay, so now we got this gasket here. <clears throat> it says to line it up. And to firmly press it in place. There we go. Next step says to use a finger and apply a thin layer of this in here, which is the gasket maker, around the intake ports. says apply a quarter inch thick bead of this gasket maker on the cylinder heads there we go the next step was to clean the mating surfaces on this manifold cover here with degreaser, which I did, and then take this and set it in place. that it's kind of hard but you want to line up these screw holes and um, there's eight of them this is a vortex head well it's a regular or vortex it's just it's blueprint heads but I got the vortex um, gasket or intake for this application so and then the next is to install the bolt so let me get those ready and I'll torque them down Now is what I want to do is just kind of get this cleaned up.
next step here is to uh, install the valve covers. Next, I'm going to put this uh, throttle linkage on here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the harmonic balancer. Uh, this is part of the tool and it just screws into where the harmonic balancer bolt goes. Then this slides over that. And this bolt goes in here. And it threads into this piece here. Take our harder balancer and slide it on. Now the the new um, seal has grease around it, so I didn't add grease because I don't need it. Okay. Put the nut on. Let me get these tightened down. Okay, so with this piece here, you don't want to screw this in tight. You just want to screw it in until it's lightly seated. Because otherwise, you're going to be trying to get it out of that hole. Let me tell you, it is not fun. So the next thing I need to do is, I just, I tested the starter and it actually, it, it's good, it's working. So that's a plus. So I got to line these timing marks up. Let's see if you can see them. Let me turn this light here. I'm not sure if that will help, but I have to set it to 12 degrees for top dead center. Which tiny marks are right here. And I don't know, let me see if you can see this. Right here. Sorry for the shaky camera. Where that mark is, the big black mark, that's um that's 18 degrees, but I need to set it to this mark here. It needs to line up with a zero right here. So I need to put this at 12 degrees. Um, yeah, top dead center. Right there. So now that that's set, um, 
that's pretty much ready to roll. And I'm gonna take this off. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna put the water pump on. Now, there's always a lot of controversy over whether you should put silicone, gasket maker over this or not. I do because it's just cheap insurance. Um, I understand it can get into the water jackets. And people say that if you do it right, it shouldn't leak. But I'd rather just have this teeny bit of insurance to keep it from leaking at all costs. So that's what I do. I'm gonna put silicone on the actual water pump itself. And then these bolts, um, as you can see, there's still residue. I gotta get these cleaned up, but put um, a little bit of that gasket stuff on there. So when they go in, they seal and they're not leaking past. Like a couple videos ago, you saw when I first started it and I had that little drip and it was leaking out of that hole. Was it that hole? Or that hole or that hole? One of these holes was dripping. Actually, I think it was a lower. And the reason it was dripping was because I didn't have silic is because I took the bolt out. I didn't put more silicone on it before I put it back in. So let me get this going. Okay, so I didn't record putting the alternator back on. The reason being is because I needed to look at the instructions because I forgot how it went. And I guess I could have watched the video, but either way, um, I got this back on. So now I just kind of want to tighten everything up. I'm going to leave this one loose for now. Um, just because it's got to roll and then I got to get this positioned where it's supposed to go so got that on and then the next thing I need to do is I need to put the pulleys on so let me get eye at that Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to install the distributor here. On the case of the distributor, you'll see number one, and it says to bind this up with the number one, which it is, and then insert this down in, so it's pointing at cylinder number one. So, things like that. I just gotta see what the orientation of the fuel pump is, which it looks pretty close. Or not the fuel pump, but the, uh, the gear drive for the oil pump.
almost forgot the gasket, which we definitely need on there. So there we go, let me show you. As you can see where that's pointing, it comes over here. Cylinder number one is pointing right at it, and one is pointing at it as well. Um, if you look down here, that is fully seated, so that's good to go. So the distributor is right now set and good to go. The instructions, they say to tighten down the bolt down clamp so it's tight, but you can still turn it by hand. So we're going to get that tightened up right now. There we go. It's, it's tight, it's very snug, but that's what you want. So it will actually hold So it will hold once you set that timing initially after you start the engine. Okay, so next is the electronics. The instructions say to find a suitable mounting location for the ECU, which it's I'm not going to install it right yet. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I need to do before I get to that point where I want to install it and see where it goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, yeah, mount it up here. There we go. Good enough. These are just going to be kind of laying loose. And then once everything's installed, I will go ahead and um, get everything all buttoned up. And go. But for now, I'm just going to set it up here, out of the way, and then kind of go from there. So. So the next step in the instructions was to run the spark plug wires, which I ran. Um, I have to crimp the ends on, which I do not have a crimping tool, so I gotta get one. And then um, I'll get those all hooked up, and then we'll just keep following along. Okay, the next step here, um, I got the. I got all the uh, spark plugs good to go, all the uh, spark plug wires. The next step is to connect the ECU to the main wiring harness. Route the power 
water and ground leads. Which are right here. The black and the red to uh, the terminals on the battery. So let me get your turn here and I'll show you. So I uh, ended up getting these battery extensions. They look like this here. And then a nut screws on to the end of them like that. But they take the place of the regular terminals so you can add extra wires. So that's what I'm using here. So this is for mocking up. We're going to take the positive and put it on the positive. Which it doesn't fit. And then the negative onto the negative. Which that doesn't fit either. So give me a sec here, I gotta get this modified a little bit. And then I'm gonna put those on. So I got the uh, cables here modified. I just split the o-ring and spread it apart a little bit so it will fit onto the terminal here and now i'm just going to tighten these down Next is to securely mount the fuse holder in the main relay. Which, the, since I'm not locating this yet, um, here's the fuse and the main relay. Once I get this all set to go, I will securely mount them like it says. But as of right now, I'm just going to move them kind of hanging here, out of the way. So next, it says to connect the pink wire to a hot ignition source while the engine's cranking. So is what I'm going to be connecting this to is going to be this. I'm not sure if you can see that. This wire here. Which this is the ignition, old ignition coil. So it's a 12 volt constant. Um, so I'm gonna connect this pink to there. So let me get an end on here and then we'll just get her plugged in. Now this is just all temporary to get it up and going. And then after everything is good to go, I will be fully securing and routing the wires. I actually decided to tap into the uh, windshield wiper 12 volt source. I know that's a constant um, power source, so I decided to use that instead of the ignition one, just because that was a loose fitting. So now I need to install the uh, sensors and injector wires, so let me get those and we'll get those installed. Okay, so I have these all ready to go. It says connect the following. Um, sensors is pretty much all of them so like all these are labeled I'm not sure if you see that but it says cool T so that's the coolant temperature sensor so that will plug in here the next one is the map sensor which is a manifold absolute pressure sensor Next sensor is the travel position sensor, which is right here. We have 
have a fuel pressure sensor, which is right here. Air temperature sensor, <coughs> which is in the box still. I have to grab that. And then we have to hook up these fuel injectors as well. Oh, and then also Yep, I gotta hook that up. But now, we gotta hook up these injectors here. Okay, so I thought there was, I was missing something because there's an open plug back here, but I figured it out. <laughs> I'm not missing anything. So, um, the next thing we gotta in install is the injectors, and then it goes right side of the engine, which is the passenger, left is the driver, and then it goes one, two, three, four. Kind of like in these instructions back of engine is four so you're looking at it you're the engine's flipped so right four four is back three two one so we're gonna get these fuel injectors hooked up right here and then i'll pull you over here and then i'm hooking up the injectors over here So the next step is to hook up the distributor, which is this wire. It's got the three pin and it says on here, the part number, but it says the coil and then IAC for the idle air control and the distributor. So that plugs into the other harness right here. The next instructions say connect the three pin connector to the distributor for the sub harness so this is a chevy and ford there's an, an extra harness for ford but this is chevy so i don't need that so here it is three pin goes into the three pin not sure if this is picking up Yo, that was tight, which is great. So that's hooked up. Uh, next is a coil and how to hook it up with the ignition. Um, the orange goes to positive terminal and the white goes to the negative, which I'm not sure if you can see. Let me see if I can zoom in. Back there, you'll see the little post right there sticking out. There's one on the opposite side. So there's a plus sign, so that's positive. So the orange will go over here and the white will go over there. So this can be hard, kind of hard to, to watch what I'm doing or see what I'm doing, because I'll just definitely be in the way. So let me get those hooked up, so sit tight. Okay, so I got the coil hooked up with the positive and the negative leads. Next is the um, IAC, or the idle air control. And that plugs in right on the back of this throttle body here. So, get that plugged in here. There we go. That was kind of a pain, but I got her in. Um, now it says to, um, since it's a universal, um, deal, I got to, it's a universal kit, so for all sorts of different, um, engines. So now I got to adjust the, um, the throttle blades, so I'll show you where that's done. Okay, so like I was saying, the instructions here, it says, um, you know, since it's a universal, so you gotta know how big of degree your cam is. Mine is actually 234, and that's at 0.50, um, 0.050 lift. So the thing is, is 
I suppose I got a race cam in here. It's just a rolling thunder. Um, it's a mild cam, but they consider it a race cam. So I got to turn the screw here. One and a half turns out. So what you do is you count this. So it's strapping down. So it's going to go half. One. And then a half. There we go. And is what that did, let me show you here. So when I turned that adjustment screw, it pushed on this right here, which opened these um, butterflies up just a teeny bit. So that's, uh, that's what that screw does there. The next thing the instructions say to do is to install the throttle return spring. Um, there's a plate that comes with it, but this actually already comes with a this bracket. They sell custom brackets for this setup, but I'm using this bracket that I have. So I'm just going to use this and the throttle return location for the spring. That is a stiff spring, so that's good. Perfect. So there we go. That's all installed. The uh, next thing that I got to do here is get the um, the fuel delivery system up and going. So I got to remove this here. I should probably mention that the uh, fuel injection kit for the electric pumps that I got is Edelbrock part number um, 3651. So I'm just following the instructions here. So that's what we're doing. So that's how to install this onto my engine. Okay, so after we remove the cap from the fuel um, filter there, this is gonna go onto here, like so. And then it's gonna tighten into here. Um, let me mention something. It says use the large O-ring. Um, the O-ring kind of looks like this. It's got a lip on it. And the picture, it's kind of hard to see because they're black and white, but it goes down like that. And then this piece right here, you want this, sorry, this part right here to be pointing out when you put this in, like that. And then you'll tighten it on to the end of it. Or onto the fuel rail here. Okay, let me grab a wrench. The instructions say to use a 13 16 inch wrench to tighten this down. Thirteen sixteenths does not fit, it's a seven eighths. Okay, 
says to tighten it till it's snug, <clears throat> which it is, but do not over tighten it. So. Because you still want this to rotate here so you can get the placement of the uh, <clears throat> pressure regulator on there just right. Next, it says to put the regulator right here um, into here. position it to where you the most convenient location which I might have to adjust after I get the fuel lines ran and hooked up and then use the 10 millimeter bolt that's applied to tighten this on which we go that's on now this will continue to swivel which is good so <clears throat> we'll just uh, keep it like that for now so for my application I didn't really like the position that that was in so I turned it <clears throat> and I put it in this position where this is pointing up and out And then these use the AN fittings here, which I'm actually gonna put like that because my fuel return is um, on the engine. My fuel return is actually right here. And that's what I'm gonna be using in the long run. So I want this AN fitting pointing that way. So when I run the fuel lines, They'll go straight back down the fireball and into that fitting there. There we go. That's all hooked up. Now on the other side of this is a vacuum port, which I'll show you here in a second. And I'm just going to hook the vacuum line up to that. Okay. So there's the vacuum line. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. There's a vacuum line. I'm just going to hook this vacuum line up under here. I'll need both hands to do it. And then it's going to go back around the intake here. And it's going to connect into this nipple here, which is designated for vacuum. Okay, I got that vacuum line ran. And just because I think it looks nicer, I went down here under the intake and back and around and in. So and there's a lot of wires kind of hanging here. These, like I said, will get cleaned up, but for right now, we're just going to focus on getting everything running before I get to securing all the wires and making everything look nice. Okay, so I finished buttoning up the engine here, um, and the next thing that I got to do is I got to put this air filter on here, and if you look in here, you'll see that this right here was for the plug for the air temperature sensor. So this actually goes into the uh, air filter here. So I drilled that in and got it set. Get that plugged in here.
that is too long, so I'm gonna have to get a shorter one. But that is what she's looking like. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. I have everything pretty much all set up and ready to go. So um, I got the fuel running over here on the just the remote tank. I don't have all the lines pumped in yet. I got the return and everything put in. And then also I got the fuel pumps right below it, like it says, and it's all within three feet. So the first thing I got to do is turn on the key and then connect this to the ECU. And then I'm also looking for any fuel leaks. Here we go. So when you turn on, you just tap that. And then once you have the green arrow, you're going to do that. When you get the tablet with these, it comes preset with the, uh, with the tuner already installed. So I have that all ready to go. Um, the next step here is to tap the setup wizard icon here we go and then once wizard opens tap to start um, the wizard right arrow so we want to continue it's a naturally aspirated engine 1843672, that's my firing order. 350 cubic inch. It's got a race cam, 58 PSI fuel pump. Uh, the injectors. Give me a sec here. Give me just one moment here. Okay, the injectors are 29 pound per hour. And as you can see here, it is loading the map onto the tuner. <clears throat> so once that's done, I will come back. So after the base map was loaded, it said calibration was successfully loaded. Turn the ignition key off 10 seconds and back on. Press the arrow to continue. So let me turn it off for 10 seconds. Okay, I turned it back on. So far, I don't see any fuel leaks, so it looks like this line was wiggling a little bit, so I know that fuel's going through it. Um, so before I start the engine, it says uh, don't drive the vehicle, set the base timing icon. So um, I guess I didn't hit the next button. There we go. And it says do not drive the vehicle, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then you set lock the timing to 12 degrees. So let me set up my timing light here. Okay, the next step is to start the engine and then adjust the idle speed screw, which I think I'm gonna have to take off the air box because the idle speed screw is under there. And um, I gotta set it up so it's gonna be running on its own. Okay, I got the cover off. I plugged the air temperature sensor back in and just set it up on the manifold out of the way of everything. And before I start, I'm just gonna go around and make sure everything looks good. And then, um, yeah, then I'll come back and I'll try to fire it up. Well, everything looks good. So I'm gonna try to fire it up, see what happens.
running pretty good. Uh, I just gotta let it heat up. But while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and lock down the distributor. Verify it's at uh, 12 degrees. a lot because I had oil on that manifold, dirty hands, slight backfire, but I think it should be okay. Look on here, my RPM is setting about a thousand, so I'll adjust that here in a minute. And then also my coolant temp is at 99, or 100 degrees, so. Before I get too hot, I'm gonna go ahead and crack this, add some coolant. Set that about 750, that sounds good. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on things here. smoke is because I didn't put the dipstick tube in and it is just spewing. Let me 
get this in here. Now that I got the dipstick tube in, set the uh, what's called the idle air control here I had to set that so it was between 5 and 15 percent so when I backed out that screw because it was on zero because it was open so the idle air controller wasn't opening which regulates the RPM man this fan is noisy but she sure is pushing a lot of air I gotta tighten that uh, belt up as well here looking good sounding good I think I need to add some more coolant so I'm actually gonna shut this down and then I got this electric fan on a switch as well just for temporary so there we go, she is running. Um, once this cools down a little bit, I will be adding more coolant and then I'll be starting her back up because there's just nothing cycling through the engine right at the moment. Okay, so I got some more coolant into the engine. So now we're gonna fire it up again. Do this, connect to the ECU. There we go, we're good to go. I'm gonna start it up. Oh man, that is just so nice. Way too easy. Turn the key and it turns on. Seems to be running like a dream. Yeah, that is just the blue knees, man. That's too cool. Now I got the setup, I'm going to put the air intake back on. There we go. That's what she looks like. It's actually really nice because my eyes aren't burning like they were before. It's not too rich. After I got that new pointer on and then put the uh, tool in to find top dead center, I verified it was exactly top dead, so that helped a lot. The only thing that I think I need to do is, um, actually I know I need to do is, if you look here, my fuel pressure is only 42.4. 
So I need to get a different fuel pressure regulator. Um, I need to get a 58 cal, uh, PSI pressure regulator. Uh, other than that, she seems to be running great. Oh, that's awesome. I can't tell you how happy I am. I just got the RPM. I set the RPM to 700. It was set at 750. I'll see what it's like. Uh, and then also here in a little bit, I'm gonna let this completely cool down. And then I'm gonna come back out and start it when it's super cold to see how she does when I start it on a super cold engine. And when I say super cold, it's Minnesota. Let's not forget it's like, I think, 11 degrees out. It's cold. Alrighty, so it is a few hours later and we're gonna go for a second start here on the motor. So let me get this set up. This is a cold start. It is 30 degrees in my garage. The engine I imagine is around the same. Here we go. Start it right up. All the numbers seem to be good. She is just running good. Can't complain. Well, everybody, that's a wrap for today's video. Um, super excited. This thing is just running awesome. I can't be more happy. The fuel injection, it's super nice. Just turn the key and it starts. Now, actually running it on the road, it's going to be a little bit before I can actually do that. But I have some good faith that it will actually run good. So here's the hoping. Um, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Um, and if you could subscribe, that would be great. Hit the bell icon so you get the notifications for the uh, next video. Um, I'll probably be doing stuff off camera, like getting all the wires and everything cleaned up and installed. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be filming, putting the fuel lines in and stuff. It's all under the car. It's really hard to see. But um, yeah, I appreciate everything and um, appreciate you guys watching my videos. And uh, we will see you all next time. Later.